Do you know what's better than Earth? A super Earth. You already know that the Earth is a pretty cool place. It has an atmosphere, it has water, it has life. But what if I told you there are planets way better than Earth? Planets with a mass greater than Earth's. You know, like the upgraded version of Earth, or call it Earth 2.0. Get comfortable and let's venture out beyond Neptune and find out about these super Earths. Exoplanets and finding them. We're always looking up at the sky and wondering what's out there. But did you know that as of March 21st, 2022, we have reached the 5,000 mark of exoplanets found? That means that other stars out there in the universe have their own respective planets orbiting around them. These planets are known as extrasolar planets, or better known as exoplanets. Think of it like another solar system floating on the vast area of the cosmos, and millions if not trillions of these planetary systems exist. How do they find these exoplanets? Well, they don't literally just stumble upon them. Instead, scientists use various methods to detect the presence of an exoplanet. One of these is the Kepler Space Telescope, which NASA launched in 2009. It is a powerful tool for discovering other planets and searching for planets like Earth. Zero and liftoff of the Delta II rocket with Kepler on a search for planets in some way like our own. The telescope is designed to find planets within our solar system and beyond by measuring the light given off by stars. As planets orbit around a star, they create what are called transit events. When they pass between us and their star, they block out some of its lights. By measuring these transits over time, we can determine if there might be other bodies orbiting that star, including potentially habitable ones. Planet Types When astronomers started finding exoplanets, they realized how vast and diverse the universe truly is. The universe is full of planets, and every one of them is different from our own. If you think about it, it's almost like when you're out on a field trip to an ocean park and you see these unique species. For example, purple planets, it turns out, do exist. We're constantly learning about new planets and new ways that planets can occur. This makes astronomy exciting. Astronomers have classified these planets into four types. Gas giants, Neptunian, terrestrial, and super-Earth. Gas giants are when exoplanets are the size of Saturn or Jupiter, or even much larger. Just imagine how big these gas giants' exoplanets are if Jupiter could already fit all of the other seven combined planets of our solar system. In contrast to Earth, gas giant planets have whirling gases over a solid core rather than hard surfaces. The second type is the Neptunian planets. By the name of it, these are exoplanets just like the size of Neptune and Uranus. However, it is possible that some exoplanets like it can be smaller than Neptune but bigger than Earth. These exoplanets' atmospheres are more dominated by the elements of hydrogen and helium. Terrestrial planets are exoplanets the size of Earth or smaller. These planets are primarily composed of metals or silicate rocks like the ones used to create glass and jewelry. Last but not the least is super-Earth. Generally speaking, these are known as being lighter than Neptune but more massive than Earth. An atmosphere may or may not exist between them. Earth versus super-Earth So, what is the difference between a regular Earth and a super-Earth? The difference is in their mass. A super-Earth is twice the size of the Earth and up to 10 times its mass. They're like regular Earths that have been pumped up with steroids, so it makes sense that astronomers are calling them super-Earths. Besides, they only called it super-Earth because of its size. Therefore, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're an exact replica of our home planet. Since super-Earths are so much bigger than our own planet, they have much stronger gravity. So strong that you would weigh double there compared to your actual weight here on Earth. If you weigh 110 pounds on Earth, you would be 220 pounds on a super-Earth. NASA even confirmed the existence of super-Earths, which are so hot they can vaporize metal. Just imagine how hellishly hot that might be. However, the truth is we don't really know all that much about them yet, given that they're unlike any planets in our solar system. The Game of Finding Life Earth is the only planet in our solar system that has life. But what if there were more? What if there were other planets that could support human life or even more complex life? These are the questions that astronomers are trying to answer by searching for Earth 2.0, a replica of our own system somewhere out there in the cosmos. Well, lo and behold, on July 24, 2015, data from the Kepler Space Telescope have revealed the first ever Earth-sized planet discovered to orbit a near-solar twin called Kepler 452b. The Kepler 452b has been dubbed as Earth's closest twin, despite being 60% larger than the Earth and 10% larger than the Sun. 
Scientists don't know yet if Kepler-452b can support human life or if there is life on the sand exoplanet, but they have classified it as being under the super-Earth. Kepler-452b, also known as Earth 2.0, orbits a sun-like star named Kepler-452. Meanwhile, on October 5, 2020, it was announced that the possibility of 24 exoplanets with conditions even more conducive for life than our own home planet, or called superhabitable, is presented by a new study from Washington State University researchers. Habitable Zone Finding Earth 2.0 is not as easy as it sounds. Exoplanets must meet certain criteria in order to be considered habitable. Of course, a livable planet is one that can support life for an extended period of time. As far as researchers are aware, this necessarily requires a planet with liquid water. This is important because water is an essential ingredient for life as we know it on Earth, and life begins with water. In fact, a person can only survive without water for three days, so just imagine what could happen if you're on a planet without water. Have you ever heard of the habitable zone? It's a range of distance from a star where it's warm enough for water to remain liquid on a planet's surface. This means that water is stable in its liquid form, enabling life to exist as we know it. The habitable zone is also called Goldilocks zone because it's just right, not too hot, not too cold. And if you've ever read the classic children's story, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, then you'll understand why this name stuck. For instance, planets outside of this zone may have surface temperatures that make it impossible for water to stay in a liquid state, just like Mars, or they might be so close to their star that they are completely melted, like the planet Venus. So if we want to find planets similar to Earth, we have to look for those that have orbits that fall within this zone. How do scientists figure out which stars have planets inside their habitable zones? They look at the amount of light coming from each star, and then measure how much light comes back through its atmosphere. In other words, they can now look at a planet's glow to determine if it has water. Recently, we found three new planets that fall into the habitual zone, and they're all super cool. Exoplanets LP8909b and C are two of the new additions to the list. Around 98 light years away, both planets revolve around the relatively cold red dwarf star LP8909. The radius of LP8909b is 30% larger than that of the Earth, whereas that of lp 89090 is greater than 40%. Finally, meet Ross 508b, an exoplanet orbiting another red dwarf star. It travels in and out of the habitable zone of its star during each of its 10.8 day orbits. The super Earth was discovered by Japanese astronomers in May 2022. The why? I know what you're thinking, but what does this have to do with anything? Well, this is important because we can use the super Earths to help solve or at least get an idea about the different problems we face here on Earth. Scientists also study super Earths because they can tell us a lot about how planets form and evolve over time and knowing more about how planets form will help us understand how our own Earth formed billions of years ago and how it might change in the future. Not only that, but it also aims to answer the ultimate question of, are we alone? So, what does all this information mean for us? It means that we should continue to explore space because there are other planets out there that are possibly better than Earth. We know that these planets exist, but we need to keep looking for more of them and figuring out what they're like. Whether it's a planet that orbits two suns or one that's entirely covered in water, there are still plenty of planets out there just waiting to be explored. We've only scratched the surface. There's still plenty of mysteries to be solved and questions to be answered about the universe and our place in it. The possibilities are endless. We need to keep looking out at the stars and asking questions like, what if? We can only learn so much from here on Earth. It's time for us to put on our spacesuits and start exploring. How about you? Would you like to live in a super Earth? Or is there still no place like home? Comment down below. As always, we'd love to hear more of your ideas.